God willing, next Wednesday night we're going to have a, an event in Brickell. God willing, at starting at from seven to nine and on a rooftop in Chabad or Brickell. A great, great event. We're going to do a singles class with a mixer. That's going to be next Wednesday night at Brickell in the Cove rooftop. So really, really great event, huh? Eh, stay in your lane. We got if you're married, stay in your lane. So we got to stay in your lane. Yeah. Uh, yes. Some people called me today about the times. Yeah. It's Spanish time. Spanish time is an hour and a half plus under. Yeah, yeah, we'll be all right. So God willing, that is next, next Wednesday. We're going to give instructions on how to attract your soulmates and not screw it up. That's going to be next Wednesday night. That's pretty much. How to not screw up. How to not sabotage your soulmate. That's pretty much, uh, you're going to get a very clear cut instructions on a clear decision on how to make and how to attract that. That's going to be next Wednesday night, etc. All right, today we're going to talk about his bodidut. His bodidut is a phenomenal, phenomenal, it's one of the main things that Brestel is known. His bodidut is talking to God alone. We, we, you know, you spoke about this concept, bidud, 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 over the past year. People had the virus, they had to go into quarantine and to do bidud. So you could see this is a very, very common in Israel, bidud, bidud, I'm in bidud for two weeks, I'm in bidud. Some people got closer to God, some people played PlayStation, some people... Whatever they did in that bidud, it's a different story. But his bodidut means to dwell alone with your Creator. Believe it or not, I would say 99% of my prayers in his bodidut, the energy I put in, in that prayer, I see the results during the day. So in, in life, what we want to really do is we want to put the effort in the, and the time in the right place. Sometimes we're, we're too busy controlling people, sometimes we're too busy... Uh, you know, being angry or other things, we're, we're, we're shooting the messengers and not going to the message, which is connecting to your Creator. And His Bodhidut is able to give you a steady frame, a steady time to be able to develop that relationship, just like a, wor- a workout. If you ask a guy how, how, how many times you work out, oh, here and there, once in a while, you, the results are there. Same thing in His Bodhidut, when a person has a set time to talk to his Creator, he's going to get results. And we want to focus more on the, instead of the intensity, more the consistency. Very important, the consistency in, in, in having a set time to talk to your Creator. This is Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman said in Lesson 25, something very great. He says, his bodidut is greater than everything. It's a very strong line for Rabbi Nachman to say his bodidut is greater than everything. I mean, that's a pretty, he was, he was I mean, many people saw that and they're like, how can it be greater than everything? It is greater than everything. Because the benefits, we're going to talk about here, 10 benefits that you're going to get from his bodhidut and 10 things that are going to help you. And really you're going to see this as a complete different thing. Just in general, if we see in life that we're out of energy, it's a good chance that the reason why we're out of energy is because we're, our, our, our energy is not refu- renewed. Many times because we're holding too many things, we, 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 we're, just, we're overwhelmed, and what happens when we're overwhelmed, we normally check out. His bodhidut is all ultimately about checking in, not checking out. Checking out is the problem, checking in is the solution. Sometimes you don't have to worry about what you're even saying. The fact that you're checking in, that you're showing up and, and approaching the issue of whatever's got, whatever you got going on in your life, that is the greatest thing. The worst thing we could do in life is to check out. Because when we check out, we're basically telling our Creator, you gave me too much, I'm done, check out. And this is where you, we miss the whole opportunity for growth, we miss the whole opportunities in our life, and this is where we come into the wrong mindset. So the, the main purpose, as our Creator said, when Adam, when Adam made a mistake, he blamed his wife, and then he hid. What did our Creator say? Ayeka, where are you? So that same Ayeka, where are you, is being called all day long. Um, and we, are, we have to connect. That Ayeka concept, where are you, is a concept that we always have to go through. Many, many times, Reb Nachman has, has many tefillahs, uh, asking, how can I see the salvation if I didn't even pray for it? He's saying in this prayer, how can I see the salvation if I, don't even, I didn't even pray for it? Which is something unbelievable. Like, how, many people are waiting for miracles. You know, they're, they're buying lottery tickets and they're just... You know, they're, not, they're not creating the vessel. They're not creating the, 
the, the connection, the, the lesson behind it. They just want the, the quick flash. And this is the wrong mindset. You know, this is the, everybody's in the Dogecoin mindset, and the Bitcoin mindset. The mindset, spiritually, that doesn't work. It could work on, on currency coins, but spiritually, it doesn't work like that. The effort, the approachment, the intention is very important. It's very important what we do. It's not so much about what you're doing, it's your intention behind it. What is your intention behind something? More than just doing. Your creator is interested in your intention behind it. If I just go pray to, to get what's going to happen, I'm probably going to be burnt out. But if I pray to connect, it's never going to end. See the difference? Going for an acquisition versus going for a, con a connection. So this is first thing the, the, in doing any of this, which we're going to talk about is we want to really, the whole purpose is to connect, not so much to get. Because once we go and it's just like a get concept, you're really, you're doing it really just as a, as a ploy. When you're doing it to connect, you're transforming, you're, you're, you're getting to a much higher purpose. So remember, getting versus connecting. That means very, very important concept is not to control. Like control is such a problem today. Control is like the number one problem today. It's get out of the way. Like pray and get out of the way. Get out of the way, get out of the way. Most people are in the way. They're just, they're in their own way. So blessings can't come in because they're in their way. And how do, how do we get in the way? We, 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 we worry, we, we uh, control the prayer, we want to get answered now, we get frustrated when things don't work out. You know, this is the form of, of getting in the way. And really the key is really to get out of the way and let your creator take over you. That is really the most unbelievable concept. When you get into a prayer and you get into a certain amount of flow, your creator just takes over your mouth and he put, gives you the words on what to say. Rav Nachman says that in Lesson 156. So what's the differentiation between this and my, and just regular meditation? Why can't I just meditate, you know, mm, and everything will be okay? Right? Let me just meditate. Let me do what everybody else, just meditate. What do I need to talk? What do I need to do this? Let me just meditate, right? It's a good argument, right? Doesn't take much work, you have great, great apps. So Rav Nachman says, for on the face of it, it's hard to understand why we have to pray when God knows our thoughts. However, this, this is because words are the vessels of bounty or all our thoughts. However, it's because the words are the vessels of bounty in which we receive the influx of bounty. You understand? When you say a bracha, when you say a word, when you pray, that is the vessel for bounty to come. So you physically have to talk. You have to talk it out. You can't just think about it. It's not just attraction, it's speech. Everything has to go through thought, word, and speech. So speech is part of it. If it's just in here, it's just be you can become spiritually constipated. The words have to come out. Because ultimately an expression is a form of prayer. It's a prayer. So Rav Nachman clearly tells us, tells us that the words itself are the, the prayer itself is the words are the vessels of the bounty. Which is something you don't understand. People don't understand. What do you mean? I have to talk about it. God knows what I know. Why, do I sh why should I pray? No, you have to physically say it out. I want this. I want that. I want to connect. You physically have to say it out. And the influence of bounty is accordance with a person's speech. If the words of the vessels are perfect with fullness, then we can receive abundant bounty with him. And Rav Nachman tells us more that before, how, where did this all start? It started from the Pasuk in, in, in Psalms 81. And it says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open up your mouth wide and I will fill it. You understand? I am the one who took you out of Egypt. Open up your mouth wide and I will fill it. Before, there was no arousal from below. There was only an arousal on high. But now, the arousal became below. All right, okay, wonderful. All right, it's okay. That will, that will wake up uh, New York, that, that ringer. <laughs> that ringer will wake up New York, my goodness. Okay. So, open up your mouth wide. You understand? See the difference? Open up your mouth. I'm giving you the power to control. I am giving the power to control your destiny. 
but you have to create that arousal. The same thing. Seventh day of crea- sixth day of creation, God cr- cr- created rain. But he purposely says, there's no rain. Adam, you pray for it. And then rain came down. So the whole system is made where a person has to create that vessel in order for him to pray. The prayer itself creates the bounty. In other words, the influx of bounty is according to the opening of the mouth and the vessels of speech, each person according to his aspect. Remember that concept. So there goes the med- meditation. It's very good to calm the mind down, to get your thoughts together, to, you know, to turn on your parasympathetic system. You know, all the one- amazing, amazing things about meditation. Breathing, it gets, you, it gets you aligned. Excellent. But if you really want to get better efforts, you actually have to talk. You have to talk. And today, we could see that the struggle is not to... We know what to do. The struggle is doing it. Because we have a big evil inclination that doesn't allow us to speak. He tells us we don't have time. He tells us this. He tells us whatever it is. But very important. The difference, you have to actually speak it out. Remember that concept. Speak it out. Turn the worries into speech. You have a worry? Get it out. Speak it out. Like therapy. Speak it out. Speak it out. It's very important, this concept of taking it from potential to actual. And this is why speech has to come out. So now you know the difference between meditation and speech. Very big difference. Get your head together in meditation. Sometimes you're going to have so much anxiety. Sometimes you're going to have so much angst that you're just going to have to talk. And there's not, you don't even need that meditation. You just need to let it out. And we always spoke about many times that the opposite of depression is expression. It's expression. Opposite of depression is expression. Instead of holding it in, express it. We need to also understand that our Creator does not change. He does not change. So we're not going there to change our Creator. What we're going there is to change ourselves. After a good prayer, after a good meditation, you'll, you'll feel more lighter, you'll feel a sense of relief, and bottom line is, you did what you did. You have a situation in your life that you're going through, you, have, you connected, you spoke about it, you talked to your creator, and then you're free to let go and enjoy the rest of your day. Do you understand? Most of us, they worry, did I, did I do enough? Could I do better? Or maybe I didn't do enough, maybe I'm wrong. We walk around with so much guilt, maybe because our mothers gave it to us. So much guilt. There's a lot of Jewish guilt. You understand? It's my fault that this happened. It's always my fault. This is a, a consciousness. I don't know why, but somehow there's this concept about guilt. This constant guilt that I do right, being punished all the time. Your job is to check in. Listen, I could have made a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. My fault, your fault. Whatever it is, I'm checking in. I'm sorry. Bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. You don't want to walk around with all this guilt and, 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 and fear and and because you can't enjoy the rest of your life. You don't walk around already as Nebuch with, with weight and emotional weight and, and with, a, with, a, with a mindset of a, of a, that you're always doing something wrong. So very important to, that you, when you check in and you pray, that's it. That's it. Enjoy. The rest of the day, you, you, you could do, you, you're free to do what you need to do. Instead of walking around with all of this guilt and this, and this shame and this, all of this, these emotions that are, that are causing extra weight on us. It's very important. Do what you need to do. Check in and bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of the day. It's only his body. Dude, maximum should be one hour a day. Your creator wants you to be broken and broke your heart to confess and then the rest of your day, enjoy. Enjoy the rest of the day. This is not a, 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 a religion of, of constant persecution and my creator's in a cloud. He's out to get me and strike me. This is all a movie that everybody's watching. Maybe they watch the Ten Commandments. I don't know what they were watching. But we have some kind of image of our Creator that He's at the stick you know, with lightning and He's an old man in heaven out ready to get you. Unfortunately, this is the mindset. That, unfortunately, this is what movies do and how it has done to people. Create an image that our Creator is out to get you. No. Completely false. So we never pray. Just to the, I'm talking about the concepts before we get into the thing. You, you, you're not praying to change your creator, you're praying to be able to change that situation the way you look at it. And when you expand your mind, you create a bigger vessel. For example, somebody insulted me, and um, I take it personal, and I'm angry, so what should, and I'm upset that I got insulted. So what should I do? I should, all of a sudden, 
go to my creator and say, why do I have such hate towards that person? Maybe I took it personal. Why did I take it personal? Because I was in a good mindset. If I was more besimcha, I would recognize what he's saying has nothing to do with me. Why am I walking around? So through prayer, you're able to, God opens up your mind and you're able to transform regular events. You, you, a person has Shalom Bayit, he's married in 2021 without his bodhidut, he's not going to make it. <laughs> Buster Douglas, six minutes on the, lucky he makes it for the first round because there's, marriage is all about bittal, nullification, letting go, surrendering, qu- closing your mouth when you're ready to talk, getting rid of resentment in your heart that you're thinking about, building up. What do you think it's all about? Somebody's all of a sudden, you're free, you get married. Somebody's in your face, hold it long, telling you what to do, telling you you got to be this, you got to be that. You gotta, what do you think? This stuff doesn't accumulate? You're going to burst. But if you have his body do, you recognize your, your, your spouse is just a helper to get you to your mission. But without proper prayer, without a form of, of something, there's no way you can handle it. Because all day long you tell, you're being told what to do. I didn't, you didn't do this right, you didn't do that right. How are you going to hold all that in? No, you're not going to hold it all in. You're going to build it up, and then one day, Boom. One day it's just going to go. So this is, his bodhidut is a meditation of the heart. That's the whole purpose. Why the heart? Because the heart itself is ruled by two things. Our emotions are rooted in my heart. Correct? And also my passions are rooted in my heart. So both my emotions are connected to my heart. As is our heart is in charge of every emotion. And our passions are rooted in our heart. So we have to cool down the heart. So when you pray and when you connect and you do spiritual work, you're like, you're fanning down the heart. You're cooling down the heart. Because the heart in general, like the Zohar says, it's very, very hot. And if it wasn't for the lobes of the lungs cooling down the heart, the heart would consume your mind, the heat would consume your brain. This is what we call somebody flipped out, he's crazy. What happened? His heart went straight to his head. What does he refer to here as cooling off? When I pray, any, any spiritual work, what am I really doing? I'm cooling down the heart. That's the purpose of spirituality. You cool down the heart. You cool down your emotions. You cool down your impulses. So that what happens when you cool down your heart? Then you're able to think properly. But if there's nothing cooling down the heart, like a computer, the computer's hot. If there's not a fan cooling it down, it's going to break. Same thing mentally, spiritually with us. If we don't have some kind of spirituality cooling us, cooling our impulses, or cooling our emotions, we we have a breakdown. And that's what exactly what you're doing. This is why Shavuot represents the lungs. Because Shavuot, we get new lungs. We get new vitality. Five lobes of the Torah, five books of the Torah, five lobes of your lungs. You're getting, the, the Torah itself is the new lungs. You're getting a lung transplant. That's what you're getting on Shavuot. You're getting a brand new lung transplant. Because when I can breathe, I can think. I can't breathe, I get choked by my emotions or I get choked by my passions, etc. So this is really why it's not just about what you say, how do you say it, am I doing it right, am I not doing it right. The fact that you're checking in and you're saying, I need to cool down my heart, that itself is extremely precious. Because you're showing your Creator that you want something more out of this world than the same thing that people, normally people are chasing. So, ultimately, his bodhidut is, is in three steps. So the first step is really, we want to start with gratitude. We want to start with a form of, of vibration, right? Because if you're going to your, your creator, it's very hard to go and say, listen, you broke this for me, you broke that for me, this is broken, that's broken, okay, what do you want from me now? It's not a very welcoming approach. So we want to start by building momentum with gratitude. We want to vibrate on gratitude. So what I do is I put music on. I put music on, focus music, and I'll, put, I'll, I'll do the 10-minute Wim Hof. Then I'll start gratitude. Then I'll start a gratitude vibration. Because what happens is, Lesson 156 from Nachman says, that once you start getting into, when I'm grateful, I'm warm. You ever hear people say, oh, he's very warm. He's very, what a warm person. That means that person has heat. Warm, heat is very connected. So when my, I'm grateful and I'm, and I'm warm, I become warm, I'm warm-hearted. Once I am warm-hearted, the words come out much easier. 
versus being cold. When a person is cold, the words don't come out. Now, why would I be cold in the first place? I'm cold in the first place because my mind's not there, I'm stressed, I'm preoccupied. So when you start with gratitude and you start with some kind of warmth, the words come out more flowly. Just like you're having a conversation with somebody you like, the words come out. But when, when the words are not coming out, it's because there's a preoccupation, your worry, anxieties, etc., not allowing us to, to speak. So again, you don't have to follow this order because every day is gonna, you're going to get thrown a different challenge in your life. One day you're going to be flying, everything's going to look like uh, you know, you're, you're, you're getting the gold in the Olympics, and another day it's going to look like you didn't even get to the stadium. You understand? Your life is going to fluctuate, Rabbi Nachman tells us, so much where you're flying and, and other days where you're just you're, you're, you're struggling for oxygen. And this is telling us this is the common experience we have to go through. This is the running and returning concept. So you're never going to meet your creator in the same, in the same it's not a, you know, it's not, this is not a Lego box. This fits here, that fits here. No, different times of your life are going to demand different things in your life in the situation. One day you're going to have to pray for this, one day you're going to have to pray for that. It's not, it's not a cookie cutter approach. It's where are you, where, where, where am I using right now to connect to you? So sometimes I don't start with gratitude. I start with begging for help. Like, a, like I'm stuck in the middle of the ocean. And sometimes when I'm in a better state, then I'll start with gratitude. So it doesn't mean you start in that order. It all depends who's, who's running after you. Uh, who's running after you in your life. Somebody's always going to run after you in your life. Sometimes your head's running after you. But somebody's always pursuing a person, and I think it's made to be that way in heaven. That some, something is always happening to us, that it's getting us to run somewhere. Because if, if something wasn't happening, where else would we run to? So it forces you to, to run to heaven. So the best way is obviously gratitude. And the way you say gratitude is basically just to... Ha to the whole purpose is here, is we're connecting to joy because joy opens up your mind. As our sages say, a, man, a person of joy has many blessings. A person of faith has many blessings. So joy itself is able to attract more things to you. When you're in a very good mindset, you're starting to have better ideas, you have better solutions, and one of the best ways to do that is definitely through gratitude. So you want to get yourself in a, in a state of gratitude for everything you want to have. Because you're, you're showing the universe or God, you're showing whatever verb you want to use, Hashem, that you are 100% satisfied with what He's given you. And anything that's not the way it's supposed to be, it's just you're not looking at it the right way. Okay? So when you're grateful, you're able to create a tremendous amount of a vibration. It's a good way to vibrate. First you thank, and then you plead. You can't plead without thanking. It's sort of like, give me this, give me that, give me that, with no gratitude. Gratitude creates the, 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 opens up the door for the request versus just coming in the door and saying, who are you? So uh, we need to open up the doors. Gratitude opens up the doors. Believe it or not, it's not so easy to have gratitude. It's not easy. It's not an easy thing to say, uh, to be grateful because it's, there's stuff in our, our minds all the time. So, you know, because, you know, science is showing us that our, our brains are created for survival. They're not created to make us happy. So, you know, this, these negative thoughts are constantly, you know, I'm I feel like I'm surviving all the time. So it's very hard, believe it or not, harder than you think to, to wake up and, and be grateful. It's very hard. It's not an easy thing. But because it's hard, it's showing how much I need to do it. So gratitude itself creates, opens up the doors. Once I start getting, remember, this is not an exercise where you're going to plan. And this is not like, you, oh, I had a good Hezbollah to do it, I had a bad Hezbollah to do it. It does, doesn't exist. It's like you, you brush your teeth. It's not good or bad. It's, you ha the fact that you can have a day where you say absolutely nothing, but you showed up and you're trying to speak. Just like imagine your child trying to speak to you and telling you, but he can't talk to you. The effort that you see that the child trying to talk to you and just trying to express himself is worth more than if he came with a business plan of all this schmutz that he's got to give you. The fact that he wants to talk to you, that he's stuck, that itself is precious. So you shouldn't be upset that words don't come out. You shouldn't be upset that you're, you're overwhelmed. 
You should just focus on the showing up. Just show up. Because the showing up sometimes when you're in a very, very tough state is greater in heaven than days that you're speaking like flowing. It's a very important concept, just showing up, focusing on the consistency, not the intensity. Also sh- focusing on, not focusing on the results of what happened in that prayer. Because you're taking, you're just, you're, the whole point is, when you show up to a hotel, you don't have to smile when you check in. Sometimes you have to check in, get me to my room. You, you have to check in though. You can't get to your room without checking in. This, you should be focused more on the checking in. I am overwhelmed with this obstacle. I'm overwhelmed. My head's overwhelmed. But I'm still trying to go to the solution, which is my creator. That itself, Rabbi Rush, our sages say, ultimately cancels all punishment. Cancels punishment. Because the minute you're taking accountability, it cancels any kind of judgment. Because the whole pur- purpose of the wake-up call was to get you to take accountability and to start approaching the issue. That itself, okay, we got the guy's attention. No need to remind him anymore. Remember that concept. And our sages call that double jeopardy. Our sages call that double jeopardy because when you judge yourself below, you are not judged on high. If a guy wakes up and he says, listen, you know, I'm not the best husband in the world. I could be a better husband. I could be a better husband. I could be more thoughtful. I could be more honest. We don't need... Hashem doesn't need to turn his wife on 350 degrees and blitz on four downs to remind him he's not a great husband. He's already accounted for him. I recognize I have that issue. So when you admit to that issue, that sort of humbles you and that stops all further judgment. You stop the bleeding. Now it's time to grow. What continues the judgment, which we have to worry about, is denial of the issue. That is the ultimate form of judgment is when you're denying the issue. No, I don't have that problem. No, I'm good. It's their fault. That is the, that's almost the worst thing you could do. Because then you're not, you're not approaching the issue. You're just, you're flat out denying the issue, which is a form of arrogance, which is a form of judgment. Okay? This is why when a person judges, or say, just say when a person judges himself above, he does not get judged below. O.J. Simpson couldn't get tried twice, right? Same thing, double jeopardy. It works exactly spiritually, same thing. You judge yourself below, they cannot judge you above. So what happens is there's a lower judgment and there's an upper judgment. We always want to settle cases on, on, on you want, always want to s- s- settle cases in state court. You don't want to go to federal court, correct? When anybody who does a crime, they ask them, what court are you in, federal or state? Federal, oh, sorry. State, okay, we have Rachamim for you. There's still hope for you if you're a state court. The whole concept is, if we got the federal, you, you, we have major judgment. But state court, we can, I know the guy, I know the judge, I know this. It's easier. So we have the ability to go into state court. I'm just giving you an example. In the lower court, to be able to say, I made a mistake, I want to make accountability, etc. I don't need to get that wake-up call. So part of his bodhidu refers to this second concept. First is gratitude. Second concept is mishpat, judgment, inventory. Twelve steps talks about the inventory. A person has to constantly do inventory. Inventory stops judgment spiritually. Inventory is telling you, you're telling your creator, I'm taking accountability. I don't need messengers in heaven. But when I don't take that accountability below, in heaven that there's a judgment on, to wake me up in that area. And this is why it's very important to do teshuva or, to, do, or to, to, to repent quickly. Because if that case goes to federal court, anything can happen. And the judges are not the same in federal court. It's more of a din. We have the ability to bring it down to rachamim. That's ultimately what we're doing in life, is we're trying to sweeten judgment. Sometimes judgment has to come. But what we can do with our prayers and our efforts and our humility is sweeten it so it's not overbearing. I could have a bad day or I could have a bad hour. Big difference. I could turn those bad days into bad hours by, by sweetening the judgment. And this is what happens when you confess 
and you say, I made a mistake, I could have done it better, not out of guilt and shame, to say, I need to work on myself, who doesn't need to work on themselves? Then there's no reminder for the person to be arrogant, or, or the guy's ignoring the issue, or he's blaming everybody else. This is where things get really, really, really rough in a person's life. Or complaining instead of connecting. These are the issues that we need to address immediately. Or, you know, we're not attracting what we want, that we need to say, there's something I'm not doing correctly. What do I need to do? Sometimes it's to put more intensity in what I need to do. It's not just to say it's not working. That's not, that's not, a, it's not a spiritual concept. Very, very important that your speech is also connected to your, directly connected to your emunah. Your faith, like we just said before, a person of faith has many blessings. And Rabbi Nachman says clearly that a person who prays believes in faith. A person who does not pray does not believe in faith. So you can't say you have faith and you don't pray. It's not possible. It's like saying I'm half pregnant. <laughs> Either you pray, that means you believe. If you don't pray, you really don't believe. Because if you prayed, if you believed, then you would pray. Very simple. Pretty much. <laughs> I hate to make it so obvious. So we could say, I have a Muna, I love a Muna, I have stickers all over a Muna, you know, I put the beautiful post, a Muna, Muna, Muna. Okay, how much time do you spend praying? Oh, I love a Muna. No, not past, doesn't, doesn't, your action has to show. And the way our sages action is through prayer. Prayer and Amuna are one. Prayer and Amuna are one. And our sages say, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he's had his hands are up, he won the war. When his hands were down, he lost the war. When his hands were up, he won the war. The hands represent faith. When he continued praying, he won the war. When he stopped praying, he lost the war. And he's, it's not clearly that Moshe Rabbeinu, that Amalek, it was clearly that Moshe Rabbeinu when his hands got, the, the Pasuk says his hands were heavy. The heaviness. The heaviness caused them not to pray. This refers to the heaviness of our ruach, of our spirit. Of our, sometimes we get into that despair. What's the point of praying? I tried already. It doesn't work. I'm exhausted, etc., etc. His heavy hands caused them not to stop praying. So this is an analogy to us, the heaviness of the routine of life, the heaviness of, uh, you know, Como and the, sa- the heaviness. Makes you heavy. The news makes you heavy. When you're not, when you're heavy, you're not connecting. When you're heavy, you're, you don't want to deal with any of this. The heaviness is coming from your Ruach, your spirit. And what causes your, some of the Ruach and spirit? News, garbage, negativity. It affects your spirit. It affects your hands. Your hands go up, can't go up. You know, people tell you, I, I don't want to get out of bed. It doesn't mean he's, he doesn't have a good ruach. It's a problem. It's not, he can get out of bed, but he has no spirit to get out of the bed. And this is what the difference is. When we confess and we take accountability, we change that energy level. So, very, very important to constantly have that Emuna. A person of faith has many blessings, and the, per, and the, and the, and the exile of, of most issues in life are a lack of faith. And when we have a lack of faith, the first thing we do is we check out prayer. You're basically abandoning your weapon that you need. Imagine that. Imagine you're in the middle of a war, the biggest war in life, and you say you're putting your gun down. What do you think is going to happen? And you want, you want a miracle to come. No, you have to keep... The, you have to keep Rabbi Nachman says your weapon is your mouth. Your weapon is your mouth. That is your weapon. He even said to the point where you can stop a bullet. Rabbi Nachman said speech is so powerful, you could stop a bullet in the air. That's what he said. Very powerful concept. So I think we, we, we underestimate the power of our speech. We underestimate it. People don't know what they have in front of them. So this is why if you're going to do this practice of his body, you have to do it at a time where it's super quiet. You might have to sacrifice some sleep. You can sleep when you win. But when you're not winning, you can't sleep. That's the time you need to pray. 
You have to sacrifice. We can't. There has to be a sacrifice to the person. You don't need eight and a half hours of sleep. You can get seven and a half hours. You can get. You'll live. I promise you, you'll live. Or get cut twenty minutes of your sleeping schedule. Cut twenty minutes and say, "I'm cutting that twenty minutes. I'm connecting it to his bodhidut, no matter what." And what happens is you created a set time that makes a tremendous amount of splash in heaven. The fact that this person is taking this seriously. Anything in life, if you do not have a set time, if you don't have a routine, you're not going to do it. You know, people tell you today, I wake up when my body feels like it. <laughs> you're not going to get much with that attitude. You could be waking up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> you have to wake up the dawn, Rabbi Nachman says. You have to wake up the sun. You have to say good morning to the sun. The sun should not see, should, you should not see the sun. The person has to say good morning to the sun. That is the ultimate key for everything. It's the fact that you are going there and you're taking life by the horns and you're going head on with whatever you got going on. Whatever you got going on, I'm going head on. This is the ultimate re reduction of judgment. Because sleep is what? Sleep is avoidance. Sleep is a concept that I don't want to deal with it. Leave me alone. I'm burnt out. That is called sleep. Waking up is I'm, I have the issue. I'm so freaking uncomfortable, but I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to have the courage to deal with it no matter what. I'm going to feel, sometimes you, you, you feel completely overwhelmed. You're broken. You're dizzy. I don't care. Showing up. Showing up. And then you'll see from the unloading of your heart, you will, you, sometimes my, my, the times that I felt, no, I didn't want to wake up at all. I had, the greatest, I had the greatest prayers those days. So you have to go and express yourself. And it's very important. The hour, Rav Nachman recommends to do it in a time that it's quiet. It's very hard to do it in the car. Yes, you can work out also in the car. You can put bands on and... <laughs> But you're not going to get in the best shape, I promise you. Yes, you can work out in the car, you can put a lid, you can take a weight, and you can between the stoplights. Yeah, you might lose, you know, 15 calories. But, and you, but it's not gonna, you're not going to get results in the car. You know, yeah, cute, I dock in the car, people tell me. Yeah, you can put a gym in your car. But eh, it's not, it's not a, you're not going to get much results. But if you make it a set time, you get time, you get results. It's not what you say, it's the intention. We need to understand, it's the intention behind it. When you make that commitment to say, I want to speak, because most of the times, I'm going to be honest with you, whatever I began saying in, in my prayer, I ended up talking about something else completely. I ended up talking about something else completely, because when you're, when you're in a very good state and you connect to your Creator, he takes over your mouth. From Nachman says, lesson 156. He takes over your mouth. Just like you ever speak to somebody when you try to help them, and you really want to help that person, and you really, really want to help them, and you sometime, somehow you get this energy, and you start telling them, and you don't know how you, the words came out, it's because you had, a, you had a pure heart at that time, and you spoke to that person from your heart, and your Creator just took over your heart at that moment. And you're like, how did I speak to that person? I don't even know how I said those things. Where do you think they came from? Amazon, Alexa, they came from your heart. Came from your heart. Because when you use your heart and you warm up your heart, hot words come out. Warmth comes out and you're able to talk from the heart. And that is the most precious prayer. And this is what Rabbi Nachman says in Lesson 156. He says, that which a person speaks privately to his master is the aspect of Ruach HaKodesh. King David, of blessed memory, wrote the whole book of Psalms. Well, what is the whole book of Psalms made from? King David waking up at midnight and telling God all of his issues. This one's running after me. That one wants to kill me. This one's... <laughs> his whole life he was on the run. Correct? That is exactly what you're reading to Helm. Somebody's sick? Read to Helm. Somebody's sick? Read to Helm. What's with this to Helm concept? Where is this coming from? Why, why is why Tehillim so much? It's because Tehillim was, was, was spoken out at midnight at Hatzot and it was David, David Amalek's personal words. 
And that's why when you're connecting to Tehillim, you're connecting to the, the most sincere speech from the bottom of his heart. And all you're talking about, Book of Tehillim is what? All of his life. So what is that lesson teaching us? It's teaching us that this is the key. Because if you're reading Tehillim, you ever think about, what am I reading Tehillim for? What, pick, Moshe Rabbeinu had Tehillim? No. David Melch was constantly on the run. He was on the run 24 hours a day. Everybody was after him. And all he did was turn to God for absolutely everything. He rejoiced to God. We have the ability to mimic that exact situation in our lives. You're just like David Amel. Those psalms are made for you. Even Rab Nachman advises that sometimes if you can't warm up, start reading Tehillim. Read it in English. And that will help you create warmth. Remember, the key is warmth. Once they get to the warmth, words come out. I won't even pay attention how long I'm there. But when I don't have that warmth, the words don't come out. Another great book is the Kutit Tzfilas. This is a phenomenal book. This is also like a pregame show. When you speak to him, this is Rav, Rav Nassan's personal Tzfilas. His, his issues that he had to go, and he was also, everybody was running after him too. And what did he do? He turned it into seven books of prayers. Rav Nassim was Rav Nachman's disciple. The whole world was running after him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to persecute him. And what did he do? He turned it into a prayer book. So me and you can connect to it when we are in our situations of a broken heart. You could do anything. Anything to war- The whole point is to, to check in and to, use, and to get some kind of warmth. To get, some, to get that warmth. Spirituality is warmth. When you, when, you, when you give something to somebody, you're spiritual, you're warm. Charity is warmth. The whole point is warmth, the Rav Nachman is saying. Getting to that point of coldness and turn, breaking the heart and turn it into warmness. So gratitude, these kind of prayers, any acts of warmth get you into flow. Very similar to have the to a workout. You get into the workout, you're exhausted, you don't want to do it, you start stretching, you start warming up the body, and next thing you know, you're into flow. Very similar to that concept, where the beginning is a mental, I don't want to do it, but then as you go into the workout, you get into that peak moment, and you start getting into the endorphins, and you get into flow. This is exactly what his Bodhidut is about. Getting, connecting to that Ruach HaKodesh that is, give, that is put inside your heart, by your creator. So the speech is really not something that, you know, I write my classes from my Hizboh Dut. I get a, a flow, oh, this is what I'm going to talk about today, blah, 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 blah. All those quotes that you see, all, all from prayer Hizboh Dut. It's from being in a very peak state, and you just download that information. That's how I come up with all these quotes. I'm not getting it from anywhere else, I'm getting it directly from speech. Speech that comes down, I put it, I put it there. So when you're able to connect to that, it's a very, very easy, you don't worry, because you know, okay, I have a situation at six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, I have a seven o'clock appointment with my creator. That's it, move on with your life. Move on with your life, otherwise you're using energy management. Your energy management is you're obsessed with issues that you can't control, you're obsessed worrying about the future, this is all lack of, you're not managing your energy the right way. Because if I'm giving away energy, I don't have time for anything. So when, when you have an appointment and you have a session with your creator, it tells you, I have a session, let me worry about it then. I'll worry about it at 7 o'clock in the morning, and then we'll deal with it then. Right now, I need to move on with the rest of my day. So it also opens up the rest of your day. It gives you contemplation. It gives you the freedom to be able to live your life. Instead of, what's going to happen with this? What's going to happen that? What's going to happen tomorrow? How am I going to get, am I going to get married? All of this, this is not, I have a thought, I express it. I get it out of my head. Anxious people, they're always in their head. They're not, they're not speaking. They're in their head. In their head. You've got to turn it from the, you've got to exit your head and enter, and enter into speech. So this is the ultimate way, because remember, if it's in the head, it's not in the heart. <laughs> You gotta bring it down and express it. You have a worry, express it the next day. The problem today, like we said before, is the accumulation of things that are not being expressed. So what happens? 
when, it sh when things get really, really rough, then we go to a therapist and we talk about it with a the therapist. But your therapist is really your creator. Your therapist is your creator. He could, your creator can give you the consciousness to tell you what to do. This is why Rav Nassim says, if you have a major decision in your life, he says, speak about 40 days straight about that issue, you will get an answer in 40 days. Unfortunately, I've, done, I've showed this to people, sometimes at the 40th day they found their husband cheating on them. The answer is not always uh, wonderful. The answer sometimes is ugly. Doesn't mean it's, you're going to get a, a, the answer, but you're going to get clarity. Doesn't mean things are going to work out, but you'll get clarity, which is unfortunately, you know, it's a, the, we don't get usually, uh, sometimes things look really ugly, but at the end of the day, at least I have clarity. So we, don't, we're not, we, don't, we have to get out of this illusion that things are always going to be the answers that we want. No, some, it's the answers from, that heaven will give you, but at least you'll get it. And definitely, it, it's really a mechanism for you to get your life back. It's a mechanism because if I have a certain appointment at this hour, just like if I work out, let's say I work out every day, 30 minutes a day, I'm not going to be thinking the whole day, I don't work out. No, I work out, so I, it's out of my head. But if I'm not working out, you know, I should be working out. I should go to the gym. All this garbage in my head, just do it. If you just do it, you're not thinking about it anymore. It's the same concept with prayer. I prayed about it, that's it. I had nothing else to do. My job is to pray about it, let it elevate it to heaven, and, and that's it. Let, let me live my life. That's exactly the advice Rav Nachman says. You can be broken for that hour, and the rest of the day, move on with your life. Move on with your life. Don't let your whole life be dragged down by constant worries and control and things which do, do nothing for you. Does absolutely nothing for you. I'll tell you why it does nothing for you. Because when you're not in a good state, you can't grow and you can't give. Because you, you, I, I'm not in a good state. I want to go help you. No, I'm in my own head. So this is the problem. We need a mechanism. We need a mechanism to do that. Another thing Rabbi Nachman says that his Bodhidut helps you is to elevate all your fallen fears. Anything, any fear that you have today that is not elevated, it becomes a fallen fear. Okay? For example, you fear something, if it's not feared in heaven, if that fear is not elevated to heaven, it becomes a fallen fear. Just like if you don't use any loves for your Creator, it becomes a fallen love. So any fear that, that's, that we have today, it's because we didn't elevate that fear to heaven. If we elevate that fear to heaven, then we don't have the lower fear. But if we don't have that elevated fear, it becomes a fallen fear. It could be a fear of a doctor, fear of getting sick, fear of COVID. All of these fears are lower fears. They're not upper fears. Of course, you have to be responsible, but you can't live your whole life in fear. That's for sure. Because when you do that, Rabbi Nachman says, then you, that fear becomes subject to you giving energy. Anytime I, I, something becomes a lower fear, then that fear has, a, has the ability to seek judgment on me. But anytime I take that fear and elevate that fear, it can't do anything to me. This is why it's very, very important not to get fears in your head. Because if they're not in your head, they can't manifest in your body. But if they're in your head, they're going to manifest in your body. Very important, you have to be a, a police in your head. What kind of fears do you have? So his bodhidut is also where, where he says, however, when a person judges himself, and when there's no judgment below, there's judgment above, he is able to elevate all his fears above. It's another a benefit. So it's inventory, elevating all fears, checking in. Other thing is changing your, letting go of things. Bittal is another thing we do in his bodhidut. Surrendering. Okay? The best way to pray what I, what I do is when I have a situation where I say, either way, if it happens this way, it's wonderful. If it happens that way, it's wonderful. Because what happens is, when I accept, I surrender to the ultimate purpose, which is good. But sometimes I don't want to say, I want it this way. I want it that way. If this husband is meant to be, wonderful. If it's not meant to be, it's wonderful also. When you pray like that, what happens? You're connecting to oneness, there's no resistance. You understand? 
very important not to have the, res- the resistance and the control is what stops. If it works out, wonderful. If it doesn't, wonderful also. Where it's not a, a, a you know, you made a mistake in heaven. No, you want to be able to, any, any issue that we have. If I get the business deal, wonderful. If I don't, it's wonderful too. It's not meant to be. So you're always praying for what's best. That's another amazing way to just be free. Because you're not, heaven will tell you what's the best one for you. You can only win. All of this, if you see that the, the, the style that what I'm talking about is here, is, 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 is what our sages say, cast your burden onto your creator. Take all your burdens and cast them up. This is the whole purpose of life. Doesn't mean hold them down. It means cast them up. Cast them up. Cast your burdens onto your creator. When you do that, cast your worries on the Creator. Rav Nathan used to write many prayers about his worries. I have anxiety, I have this, but at least he talked about it. Instead of thinking I have anxiety, and then he had fear of having anxiety, fear, fear, fear of having anxiety. It doesn't, it's not a chronic thing. It's an occasional thing that gets elevated. And this is ultimately what you hear in this world, is you're here to take your issues and check in your Creator and ask you, what is the lesson here to learn? I'm not married yet, what is the lesson that you want me to fix? I'm not this, what is the lesson? You're always going for a form of solution. You're building a vessel that way. Instead of going in there burnt out, exhausted with guilt and shame, walking around preoccupied, I don't know what's going on, I'm overwhelmed, I'm burnt out, blah, 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 and nothing happens. That's why, you know, we, we have to sharpen the saw. You know, you have, a, you have a guy who's cutting the saw, and every time he's telling the guy, listen, it's, it's dull. It's taking you two and a half hours to cut this, this tree. So the guy tells him, do me a favor, take 10 minutes, let's sharpen the saw so we can cut the same tree in 20 minutes. What does he tell you? I'm tired, I can't do it. You can't, what do you mean? How could you not sharpen the saw? Don't you understand? Cut, saving you two and a half hours. Just take 10 minutes, Sharpen the saw so it can cut easier. No, I don't have time. He needs two hours of meditation, that person. You understand? So this is what happens in life. When you don't check in, you're not sharpening the saw. You're not sharpening the saw, so you walk around with a dull knife. and Everything becomes very dull. You have to sharpen the knife. So when you come in, connect to the morning, I'm sharpening my knife. I'm looking at the day brand new. I'm changing my consciousness. I'm not a slave to yesterday's day. I'm not a slave to tomorrow, what's going to happen. Today, it was recreated. So when you get to that mindset, you get a renewed spirit. What it gives you is a renewed spirit. And once you have a renewed spirit, you tackle today with a new day. You could be overwhelmed by a million things, but you put them in the different departments. You see the difference? You know, we like cabinets because each this is a cabinet for this. This is the cabinet for that, but you don't want to put, you know, a, a watermelon here, a peach here, and there, you don't even know where anything is. So well, you need to put things in departments. That means this is a home issue, let me put it in this department. This is a work issue, I'll put it in this department. This is a business issue, I'll put it in this department. This is a spiritual issue, I'll put it in this department. But what happens is the business issue screws up the home issue, screws up the kids issue, because we let one department sink the rest of the ship. So you have to be able to also, management of of things in life, put things in one department. Okay, you're not married yet. Wonderful. Okay, why can't we be successful at work? What if to come in with with a lousy mood? Okay, I'm, I'm, my love life is good, my work life is good. Why, do I have to, why does my wife have to hear all my garbage from my work? What happens is we, we take one thing and we just, just shove it all over the place and this is where we shut down completely. So his bodhidut also, it's like you're cleaning house. This is in this department, this is in that department, and this is in that department. Once you get to a, you do this content, and I've been doing it for the past 10 years, literally. And the first six, year, six months that I did it, there was not one answer in my life. I didn't get any answers. Things got worse. So it, it took me six months to, to even feel something. But I knew I had to do it because Rav Nachman said it's greater than everything. 
And then after that, everything just completely changed. So remember, you, first, number one, you have to do it in a place where it's quiet and you have a set time. Build that momentum in that place, number one. The best time to do it is in the morning. If you could do it before the sun comes out, even better. Because any energy before the sun comes out, there's more mercy in the day. Just like if you go to the airport at 6.30 in the morning, it's way different than going at 9 o'clock in the, after, in the morning. There's less tension. Correct? The earlier, the better. The earlier, the more clarity. Remember, we want to be in a very clear. Focus on doing it every day, not once in a while. So start with a limit, with a realistic with a realistic number that you could do. You could start with five minutes, 10 minutes, but don't go down. Guarantee those five minutes. No matter what, even if you stand there, you look stupid, you're talking to yourself. I don't care. It doesn't have to do anything with that. It has to do with, I am checking in. That is the main point of any, the the whole spiritual work is when a person is not checking in, when he's avoiding, such as addictions, such as numbing pain. This is the root of all problems. Suppressing, numbing, and projecting. That's the problem of society. Instead of expressing and connecting. See the difference? Express, connect, you get results. Project, blame, suppress, numb, you get more problems and more problems. I hate to make it so simple. So this is where you have a certain method and a certain hour or a certain 20 minutes, whatever you got to do that, to do this spiritual work. And you could start, everybody's different. Some people need, like music. Some people don't like music. Because music usually gets you in a very emotional state. You understand? But don't listen to Biggie. I mean, not that kind of music. <laughs> you got to listen to music that's contemplation. Positive music, not this crazy music. You know what I'm talking about. Ni- 99 problems, all that. Nice music that elevates you. I like focused music. I like, um, you know, very little words. Gets me in a good mindset. Then I start breathing a little bit. And then with that combination, I'm already in a better mood. Tony Robbins calls it priming. Tony Robbins has a similar concept called priming, where he puts himself in a very state of abundance and gratitude. So this is a very similar concept of what Tony Robbins does. He calls it the hour of power, his bodhidut. Believe it or not, he calls it the hour of power. And we call it his bodhidut. His form is the hour of power, where he talks about meditation and, and, and all these things. But you have, it's guaranteed to work, but you have to be careful again to stick to, your, stick to your guns. If you miss one day, then do the next day 10 minutes. Don't take it lightly. It's not to be taken lightly. And once you start building that momentum, you start building that space, you're going to see the words are going to come out, speech is going to come out, and everything's going to come out. Any, any questions so far on this concept? Any, does that, the main point is you're checking in. Remember, that is the, that, uh, that's what I want you to understand. When you're checking in, you're connecting to your creator, eventually you're going to fix the situation. It's a checking out and the disbelief and the, and the lack of amuna and the fears that don't allow you to, 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 to transform that issue. You understand? The issues are going to come. It's the only difference is what are you doing? To, to, well, how are you channeling those issues? How are, you, how are you channeling those issues? How are you channeling your money issues? And then you walk around like a human being. You have the rest of the 24 hour, 23 hours to be productive, to be successful, to be able to be available for people. Because you know, there's an issue during the day, you make an appointment, that's it. It's, a, it's an amazing method also to stop negative thoughts. Because you could say, I have a negative thought, I'll deal with it at six o'clock, 7 o'clock, come back at 7. Come back at 7. 7 o'clock we'll deal with this, with this uh, anxiety at 7 o'clock. You understand? That's what you need to do. You postpone the stupidity to 7 o'clock, and at 7 o'clock, then you want to be anxious at 7 o'clock in the morning? Wonderful. You won't, because you'll recognize, well, oh, I'm anxious because I, was, I have some kind of fear, or I'm anxious because I was, you know, preoccupied, etc. Whatever it is, the words will come to you. So, strongly recommended. I've been doing this for the past literally 10 years. I rarely miss a time, rarely miss. Don't do it in your car. Don't be distracted. Put your phone down, but start talking. I promise you, you're going to get results. It's a guaranteed. I can, I can give you a hundred Torahs on this. Another, another great book, if you want to 
if somebody you want to start, if you want more of a step by step, is this. But what I, again, it doesn't matter what toothbrush you use, what toothpaste you use, but you have to brush your teeth. Colgate, this one, whitening, who cares? Don't get too caught up, and sometimes you get caught up. Am I doing it right? Am I doing this right? Who cares? Just brush your teeth. Don't think too much. Sometimes we think too much, then we think so much, we don't do it. At the end of the day, I didn't know what toothpaste to pick. I didn't know which one. And you don't brush your teeth. And then you have a double problem. Don't, this is the root of the Yetzirah, is complication. The number one job of the, of the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, or the ego, just make, it, make everything completely hard. Oh, you mean it, I just do this and, and, and I don't have to go to this and that therapy? Just try it. That's the root of the Eight Sahara to make everything a hardaholic. Everything has to be hard. If it's not hard, it's not going to work. Oh, it's not a number one time seller? It's not going to work. This, this, is, this, is society, this is society's problem. If it didn't get two million hits on YouTube, it doesn't, doesn't mean it's not going to work. This is a society. Society is looking for the wrong things. But you have a guarantee from Rabbi Nachman, it's higher than everything, and it's going to get you tremendous results. At least you might go through situations that, okay, you're still dealing with it, but at least it'll take your anxiety away. It'll take your anxieties and worries away. I'm not going to tell you if, you're, if you haven't had kids in three years, you're going to have one tomorrow. I'm going to tell you that. But at least you checked in and you did exactly what you needed to do, you check the box. That's all. I, I, I can't do anything more. I prayed for it. That's it. That's up. Now it's up to my creator. Now it's up to my creator. That, I, I can't do anything more than that. That is how I want you to think. I said, I'm sorry to the person. Are they going to forgive you? Are they not going to forgive you? I said, I'm sorry. That's it. I can't do more. You make a state and then you, you can back away and you can live the rest of your life instead of being preoccupied too much with all of these situations. All right? Let's, let's, if you guys want to do, we'll do the meditation.